So today's video is on a more serious topic. I'm going to be discussing the shooting that sh just occurred of Ralph Yarl. And so he's a 16 year old boy who is trying to pick up his two twin brothers. And he ended up getting shot by some 85 year old white man because just because he knocked at the door from what I understand like there was nothing like concerning he wasn't like peeping in or anything and I'm all for safety or like you know I understand like times where people are concerned for their life and they're worried and you know it's just like I mean don't people knock on your door anyways like that's just like like what if it was a black person knocking on your door about to sell something like their job is commission based you know or they're trying to get signatures it's like at what point are black people not allowed to just function in society normally to do something like make a mistake like and it was a very simple mistake it was like 115 this address and he went to 115 this address and it's like a little boy and he doesn't he might not even have a phone to like now give the gate navigate like where he's going He's just, you know, made a very simple mistake and he got shot in the head. Thank God. This is like the first case that I'm aware of where the person survived. And it's just so upsetting, you know, and it's just like for them to even try to argue or like tiptoe around calling it racially based. It's just such BS. It's so obvious, like that these types of things don't happen to white people at least at the same level or at least that I've ever heard of I haven't heard of a white boy in a hood getting chased down because he was you know at a grocery store or whatever happened with Trayvon Martin where it was like so weirdly obvious that he was being hunted down for being black the same way that you know the black man who was jogging in his neighborhood and he was like an Ivy League graduate I don't remember his name, um, but I know it's a recent case and he was just jogging and those two white guys literally like hunted him down and killed him just because they thought he looked like some criminal. It's like, what? Like, how do these people like, it's like, yeah, yeah, you certainly thought there was a threat, but the reason you thought that was because the person was black and you should at least acknowledge that, you know, it's stupid to try and say anything else. Like, you know that you wouldn't have done that if that person was white. You know you wouldn't have chased down a white guy jogging in a neighborhood. Like, these people see black people and they think there's a threat. And that's the problem. You know, it's not that, well, you know, maybe he didn't think there was a threat. Oh, yeah, he thought there was a threat. But he thought there was a threat because he saw a black person at his door. It doesn't matter if that black person is a little kid. And it's like, if you have a gun you should be, you know, more well protected than anyone. Like, you know, like it's, you are you have a backup plan if this did go wrong. So all he needed to do was say like, who is this? I have a gun. And like back away, you know, kind of be hiding a little bit. And he could have said that and it would have been fine. He would have been like, oh, I'm sorry. Like I'm here to pick up my brothers. And he, you know, the same way if it was a white kid, he probably would have just been like, oh, what are you doing here? And the kid would have been like, ah, oh, I'm picking up my brothers. I think I have the wrong address. And they would have been like, ha ha ha. Oh, whoopsies. It's a mix up. When it's a black kid that knocks at your door, you shoot them in the head without even like asking. So it's just really important to acknowledge the extreme racism problem going on in America because something has to be done about it. And, you know, tiptoeing around things and not calling them hate crimes it's really important to talk about, well, why is this happening? Why do white people see a black kid? And it's like, it's a kid. It wasn't even like a 30 year old man. Like you couldn't even argue that it was like, I looked out the window and I saw this like 30 year old and it was late. And like, I didn't know, like, it's like, it's a kid. You could have tackled, even if you didn't have a gun, you probably could have tackled him and you would have been just fine. It's just like, it's just so ignorant and it's so sad. It's just like, it's sad that the way that people judge someone based off of their skin and, you know, it's just so, like, foolish to, like, call it anything other than racism. And I don't think it necessarily means that that guy's been racist his whole life or whatever, but it's extremely important to discuss, like, hidden racism and, like, well, like, it's like, 
where they talk about like white women like holding their port purses when they pass by like a black guy or like they're in an elevator and it's like it's a joke about it's kind of but it's really important to acknowledge well why do people react differently to a black person than they would uh, if they were in an elevator alone with a white guy it's like they make up these threats and you know people in general who have these like underlying racist tones and so yeah and i'm reading about it it's like well this guy with his house in the suburbs it's like okay uh-huh it's the same thing that was happening politically where they were talking about well we want that suburban dream suburban dream that we had and it's just like all of this coded language that's just very obviously saying we want to have things be as close to how they used to be as possible. And it's just so sad that there are still people in this day and age who are like still dealing with so many racist thoughts or actions, you know, and it can be smaller things. I talk a lot to my friends about how like a small thing turns into a huge thing. A small thing like the purse for example like seeing that threat when there isn't one it leads to things like this tragedy happening and again thank god he survived like i'm just so happy because this is literally like one of the first cases like i'm just so happy that i hope he gets a second chance and you know i hope they hold him accountable but it's just so hard because this kind of stuff does happen all the time and it really needs to be addressed and people need to be actively like working and making sure to prevent these kinds of things from happening ever again. I remember being like a little kid and watching the Trayvon Martin case and just thinking how horrible it was and thinking, you know, well, this is the only time it can ever happen like that. That had to be the last time. And, you know, it's super ignorant, childlike thinking. But also, it's just so ridiculous that this is still a problem like this just is so frustrating and I just wanted to address it because it needs to be talked about and anybody who's a creator in my opinion should be posting about it acknowledging it using their voice to bring light to this issue and like the hope there is instead of pretending like everything's normal is that like we acknowledge these issues and then it becomes stupid because then people protest and then people get mad that they're protesting like then it becomes instead of everyone trying to work against this issue and try to find some kind of a solution then it becomes people arguing where they're like well now these protesters are looting and yeah da, da. i was at protests during the george floyd trials and it was completely peaceful and what happened in my experience was we got tear gas like literally nothing was happening there were people like sitting near a police station not doing anything there's no you know and then they said they were gonna tear gas and i was like no they're not like no one's doing anything like they're bsing like they're just saying that so that people will leave and they did it and then they started shooting like giant rubber bullets at people and then people got really really angry and started retaliating later in the day but the fact is who started the violence in that situation who escalated things and it's like People rightfully are going to have extreme upset over these issues. And sometimes the looters, whoever, are white people who are just taking advantage of the situation. And it's not always black people. And it's honestly completely acceptable to be extremely upset about. Because this issue has been going on for way too long in America. And just wanted to talk about it and kind of discuss, you know some of the undertones because it's similar to George Floyd where people were trying to make all of these insane arguments like well he did drugs maybe he had a heart attack it's like what you literally there's a video evidence of someone getting strangled to death and you're gonna start talking about their drug history it's like if it was a white person number one that wouldn't have happened and it's just so bs like it's just like they should just own up to their mistakes and call it what it was you know I'm working through these like biases I didn't even realize I had. I thought there was a threat, but you know, there obviously wasn't and I don't know what I was thinking. Instead of trying to like make these crazy arguments to get out of it, oh well, he was on drugs or whatever they're gonna say in this case, it's just such BS and you should call it what it is and acknowledge the racism. And in doing that, we can try to like move forward and try to have some kind of resolution for this issue that is way overdue for a resolution so 
anyways it's very disappointing that this is still happening but you know i wanted to address it and talk about it so thanks for listening and you know i just hope we can do better